Hello and welcome to uh, another tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be adding an enemy. So, what I'm going to be doing is, uh, the way I'm going to do this is we're going to have an enemy and it's and it's just going to move left and right, right? L like a Goomba would. Um, but we're going to have invisible objects which when it touches one of them it will flip um, horizontally and move the other way, pretty much. This is quite similar to the uh, way the wiki does it. So we're just going to make a sprite, and we're just going to call this enemy, let's say, just to keep it nice and simple, right? Then we're going to add a sprite to it. Alright, um, I'm back. So, I'll put where well, I got this in the description, as always. So we're just going to grab our enemies here. Uh, let's just grab something that goes on the floor and could go left and right, let's say. I'll do that. I'm going to do this and this. And open. Yep, that's only really saying this because it's not in the same folder as our saved project is. If it would be in the same folder, then you wouldn't get that. So we're going to loop this and just preview it, and that is our um, enemy walking, pretty much. I'm just going to put it to 5, because that's what all of the other ones are at. Now we can make a death one. You don't have to, but you can if you want to, really. So, apply. Now we have our enemy. So you'll probably be thinking, oh, that's quite a big box it's got around it. That is our, um, that's how big our hitbox is at the moment. What we're going to do is we're going to edit hitboxes and we're just going to make a new one uh, to fit this, pretty much. I keep putting that the wrong way. There you go. Close. Apply. So now we have our hitbox on the enemy. Um, let's just make our invisible objects. So we're just going to call this one um, enemy rights. Okay, and then we're just going to edit with it, it with pistol really. All we need to do is just make an object that is big enough to just for the thing to to collide into it really. Just going to quickly make an arrow. Doesn't really need to be any good just to show that it's going that way pretty much there you go, that's right why is that open? so that's our right arrow we should put this on here let's actually extend this level out to here and then get another block of grass let's put our Let's put on our grid. That's not the right grid. There you go. Put on our grid. Do that. Okay. That's good enough. Um, so now we're going to put this over here. You can resize it if you want. Doesn't really matter. I'm not going to for this. Just going to have that there. And then we can duplicate this to make a left one, enemy left. So what these will do is when it goes to enemy right, it will flip and it will move right. When it goes to enemy left, it will flip and move left. And that's pretty much it. So save and then apply. That's good enough. So now we have ourselves the arrows. So, what we're going to do with the enemy is we're just quickly going to make uh, object variables. So, this variable is going to be called, let's just call it direction. And we're going to start it off with left because the enemy, current, the enemy is currently facing left at the moment. So, we're going to start it off at left. So, now we're going to make a new group and call this enemy so all of our enemy events will be in here so now we will do it so when the enemy is in collision with one of them with one of the left or right ones let's do uh, right first when it's in, in collision with that it will flip horizontally 
yes and now we're just going to du duplicate this but just for enemy left yep and then flip no but as you can see right now we don't have any events for it to move it's just going to flip and it but it's not touching any of them so we're going to make it move to touch any of them right so to do that we're just going to have our variables and then value of objects variable we're going to have enemy and the variable will be direction um, so we're going to use this text one instead because uh, that was a value one which needed uh, a, a number <laughs> whoops <laughs> sorry about that so um, we're just going to use that so the text of variable direction of enemy is equal to left so if that variable is equal to left it's, that means it's moving left, that means it's moving on the negative axis of the X. We're going to apply force to it, uh, just out of force, to enemy, and it will be on the X axis, so that will be negative, because it's going left. Um, let's do negative 40, just to start off with, and we, and we can just have zero on this. Okay, so now if we play it, we should see slime is moving left and then it flips when it touches that it's still moving left though um, but that's that's alright we don't need uh, any collisions on it purely because it's not going to touch anything else it, uh, and it doesn't need to be a platformer character all it's doing is going left and right whenever it hits anything so um, yeah so that's that's that and now we're going to copy and paste it and then when it's equal to right then it's going to do positive 40 so we have that but as you can see when we play it it flips but it doesn't go right and that's because we haven't changed the variables and the actions here so when it goes to enemy right we need to change we need to modify the text of a variable of an object direction and we're going to set it to right therefore we'll move right and then we can just copy and paste this and put it into here and then put it to left I'm just going to up this to the uh, 60 because it was going a little bit slowly there you go. so now we can see it goes left and right when it touches those easy you have your enemy but it doesn't do anything when it touches you if you touch it it will not hurt you or anything like that I'm actually gonna put this up more <laughs> it was going quite slowly if you ask me All right. <clears throat> so now we're going to add an event which will handle the player collisions so let's just do a collision and this will be between the player and the enemy and this one is going to be um, it will take out the player if the enemy touches the player we are we are going to do the jump on um, but after this basically so we're going to do this and then we're going to just simply do delete an object player you can do a health bar if you want I've done a tutorial on that I might make a health bar later in the series, but I don't know, you can uh, merge the two videos quite easily. So that will just delete the player. So now we want to make it so that it will delete the enemy when it jumps on. So that's quite simple. We do players in collision with enemy again. But if we then do delete the uh, enemy, then wouldn't that just delete the enemy and the player whenever we touch them anyway and not when we jump on them so now what we need to do is we need to make it so that when we jump on the um, enemy's head it will um, disappear but then when we don't then the player will disappear and the enemy will succeed so with this one we're just simply going to do if they're both on the ground as well pretty much so we're going to find the platformer 
uh, behavior and is on floor player so if the player is touching the enemy and he's on the floor then it will delete the player but if, if the player is in collision with the enemy and he's falling let's say platform behavior is falling player and is falling then it will delete the enemy let's see if that works let's do our test here that deletes the player and now we can see if it will delete the enemy it does there you go nice and simple I'm just gonna quickly just make it change the animation of the enemy because you look nicer if it squashes a bit first, wouldn't it? Let's just set it to one. You don't need to. You can make it disappear all at once if you want. Whoops. Even this game is too hard for me. Ooh. It's going to be a very hard game if there's lots of enemies. There you go. What you can do is set a timer so that um, it will uh, disappear after like 0 0.5 seconds so it will show its death thing pretty much um, I'll do this in a new video if you want it um, but I'm not gonna do it now though just to keep it simple um, yeah I'm pretty sure that's it really I might do a part two of this I only really wanted to just do this simple bit alright so just the last bit is to get rid of these, right? That's really easy. You can either just put them behind your background layer, or you can uh, hide them in the events. Let's just drag this up to the top. Um, I like to have mine in uh, chronological order, so things that will happen at the start of the scene, like with the condition at the beginning of the scene, I like to put that at the top just to help me like know the layout of them and stuff. So. You can just do it by by doing this. You can just hide and then do this and then hide and do this. Do right. And now when we play it you'll see they're gone. And the slime just just does its thing. You can make it faster if you want and all that cool jazz. And yeah. You can also see the wiki for some of these. Um some of these are based off of what's on the wiki, but I do change it a bit, or try to. Um, but you can see the wiki if you need any help. So, I hope uh, this helped you. And now you have an enemy, which you can put around your levels. And make sure to put these around your levels as well. Just to make sure um, that all of your enemies will go left and right correctly. You can resize this if you want, you can change the speed it's going at this was just an example and everything so I hope you enjoyed this like and subscribe if you want to see more of these and see you in the next one goodbye